Hello and thank you for joining me today. It's good to have you. Today I'm going to be speaking on a message that I've written entitled, Quit Asking the Wrong Questions. You know, I sometimes wonder um, if God can meet a need. And I have a feeling if we were all honest, maybe all of us at one point or another have asked, can God really help me in this situation? Can God really give me this? Or does he desire to give me this? Will he give me this? Whatever this is in our lives, we have at one point or another realized we were desiring something and wondering if God can do it. Well, I want us to uh, understand something that God desires to give us the desires of our heart. But sometimes we get to asking, can he do it? And that's different than knowing he desires to. So we uh, sometimes do it this way. Instead of taking our little problems to God or even our big ones, what we do is we say, God's a busy God. He's a big God. And I'm just, I'm just a little person. And so I won't give him all my little problems because God's busy. Maybe you think, well, I don't say it that way. Well, trust me, I've had many people tell that exactly just like that to me. God begins to uh, want to draw us into him today that we would bring to him the little problems because this is the way it goes down. Whenever we don't bring him those little problems, what we're really doing is saying, God is too small a God to meet my big problems and my little problems. Folks, he's a God of more than enough. He can meet the little problems, those little daily things that nag at us, and he can meet the big problems. You see, what happens is when we began to hold in those little problems, then when the time comes that we have the big problem that we said we had waited to give to God, well, we have no practice at bringing our needs before the Father. In fact, we've never done it, and so we don't even know for sure that he can come through for us. You see, God allows, I believe, little daily things in our lives so we can get used to carrying on, carrying those issues to him. And then as he helps us through them, we know that we have developed a relationship of trust. I trust him. He's always come through for me. And so this big issue that I now have in my life, my God has already proven that he can handle it. And I've already got a working, talking relationship with Jesus Christ. So don't hold back those little things. I want to begin reading in Psalm 78, verses 17 through 22. But they sinned even more against him by rebelling against the Most High in the wilderness. Now, the wilderness is a place of struggle, a dryness, and I'm going to say testing. It, water and food are, are there, but not in abundance. Verse 18, and they, the Israelites, tested God in their heart by asking for the food of their fancy. Yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for the people? Can he give me not just my needs, Oh, yes, yes, he did perform miracles, and he gave us water, and he gave us manna, our food. He gave us our needs, but how about my desires? Can he give me all the things that I wish for, or can he just be the God of my needs? Their needs were being met in the wilderness. We began to look back upon times in our life, even if it was for something good. I think this is important in today's message. Even if it was a good season 
And we began to say, Lord, I want what I used to have. And it was good. I served you and all things went perfect. But we're looking back is the problem. Not looking forward in trust of what do you have for me to do next, Father? But instead we're saying, Father, I want the way I used to be. I want to do what I used to do for you. I want to be fed the way I used to be fed by you. We look back even upon good things, but for some it's not good things. For some it's a, they began to long for the things that they had. The Israelites were longing for the things of the past. What were the things of the past? It was Egypt. Remember Egypt? They were, if you will recall, they were slaves. They were slaves. They were beaten and bruised. They were worked hard in the fields to gather straw to create the brick to give to the Egyptians. They were slaves. So what is it that what they were longing for? They were longing for that one moment in their past that felt good to them. Well, what was that? They said it was the spices and the garlics and the meats. Well, when they came in from a hard day's work, I bet it really did taste good. But they forget as they're complaining that the reason it felt so good is the only good thing they had. They had had a hard day and they had been beaten and they were bruised and broken. Yes, remember the good old days, sometimes we say, but when we do that, we're looking back and not appreciating what God is doing in our lives right now. They had forgotten the bad while they were complaining and wanting the good. God's miraculously brought them out of Egypt. He's miraculously kept them from the Egyptians. I want you to take a moment as I speak today to recall the time God saved you. Do you remember the purity? Do you remember the, the wholesomeness that you felt in your spirit? Do you remember that that just clean feeling all over? Do you remember the joy of your salvation? How excited you were to serve God Almighty, to be His child, to feel clean. And then after time goes by, you begin to recall some of the things that maybe it used to be like. But I want to take a moment to address some individuals that might be listening today that maybe your life has been instantly changed because of an accident. Maybe something has changed your body from that day forward. Maybe it was a, an illness that crept up in your life and completely changed your way of living. Maybe it was finances that just disappeared from your hands. Whatever it was, the death of a loved one, whatever it was that just completely changed your day from that day forward, we so often think in our minds, if I could just have it like I used to have it, everything would be okay. Well, for those who had their life changed, a good life changed, God is not finished with you. And he has today and he has your tomorrows. But he doesn't want you to look back. Oh, yes, we can look back with fondness of what God did back then. But our eyes should be this way, facing always forward toward the goal. For others, when you look back, maybe it was recalling the drugs, the alcohol, the sex, the money, the parties, whatever it was that captured you and literally held you captive. Maybe you're looking back to those things that you used to use like a God of themselves. They were your God. But now for some reason, you're sitting in the midst of your freedom and recalling those days with a longingness inside of you. Do you not remember the addiction? Do you not remember the price that it cost you? It cost you right to your very soul. 
Maybe it costs you your jobs and your family and your friends. Well, God remembers. Now, Satan will always dangle your past in front of you, but he won't dangle the pain and the brokenness and the beatings. He will dangle whatever felt good at the moment in front of you. Verse 21 and 22, Therefore the Lord heard this and was furious. So a fire was kindled against Jacob, and anger came up from against Israel, because they did not believe in God and did not trust in his salvation. Folks, wandering back in your spirit toward the old days with a longing spirit to go back there, what you're doing is saying, I don't believe that he can give me even better in the future. You see, we're not trusting God to save us and bring us into a beautiful future. We're still looking that way, and he can't help us when our eyes are back that way. He says, you look to him, and he'll keep bring you through. I guarantee you that he has life for you. Somehow, something has opened the door for you to go back in your time frame to think of that. But most likely, you opened the door, and now it's up to you to shut the door as well. God will show you how to shut that door. I didn't, begin, didn't even begin to realize the seriousness of this message until I was busy writing it out. And I thought, Father, you're calling out to your children to turn from the past and turn to the future for what you've got for them. You've got more than manna. You've got more than the, the, the bread of life. You've got joy for everlasting. You've got health and strength. And you've got a job for each one of us to do. If we'll turn toward you, there was a reason that God took the Israelites out of Egypt. It was for a purpose of removing the past. Maybe there's a reason you're going through what you're going through right now. Maybe God's taking some things from your past out of you so that he can fill it with more of him. So as you go forward, you're going to be even stronger than you ever knew before and the ministry will increase as you walk out toward the Father. Drop the past. I don't care if it was good, if it was bad. Drop the past. When God wants to give you good, he always gives even better. Look to God who is your source and he will continue to bring you through. It's his ability to be the God of more than enough and he will supply your every need today and your peace and joy as well. Praise God. We hope you've enjoyed Fresh Manna for today with Evangelist Dee Levins. For more teaching from Dee, read Echoes from God, a Christian study book for growing deep and strong in the faith. Connect with Dee and purchase her book at dlevins.com.